Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We continue with football. Playoff season is around the corner and at the end of the penultimate round of the rare nephew Jamaica Premier League's regular season, only defending champions Mount Pleasant's first place position is guaranteed in the playoff spots. As it stands, with only one match week to come, the second semi-final spot is still up for grabs between Tivoli and Cavalier, both on 51 points. The interest doesn't end there. The sixth and final playoff spot, which guarantees a quarter-final berth, is still undecided. Waterhouse, 40 points, is in pole position to a superior goal difference ahead of Montego Bay United, also on 40 points. While well, following Montego Bay United's commanding 3-0 win over Harborview on Monday, their head coach, Nida Dos Santos, says he had always felt the sixth and final playoff position would be decided on the final match day. I never, I never had that, that, that hope. You, you, you see, the difference now, I don't even know how it is now, but it's, it's big and we cannot look. We came six here, goals. we came with six goals now, but we scored three. So you see, I mean, we, can, we could not come here to think about that. Because if we, we start to think about that, is a, is a door open to maybe don't get the three points. We came here to get the three points and we did. So we scored three, could have come more, but this won't make them uh, tie with us in goals. It won't, won't happen. So everything gonna be decided in the last round as I suspect since the third round of this second round, that that six spot would be decided in the last match because it was very tight. Of course, we we, we in a chase since the second round, round started. Uh, we, we, we end up six points behind the Holden, and if you're not mistaken, four behind uh, Waterhouse in the beginning of the second round. So we catch up pretty well. So let's play everything. We have a very, very tough match against Tivoli. Tivoli, Tivoli is, a, is a contender for the title. It's a tough team, but we go off for, for get at home the three points. I just hope, I just hope in the other match, don't have some strange goals like we had yesterday, which is not good for the Premier League. Mm, strong words there by Dos Santos. But let's take a full, the full results now from the penultimate round of the regular season. Okay, so we had Waterhouse overcoming Malines United 3-0. A 4-1 win for Tivoli Gardens against Lime Hall. Cavalier beat Don Beholden 4-2. Mount Pleasant, a one-goal win against Humble Lion. A one-all draw between Arnett Gardens and Portmore United. Montego Bay United beat Harborview 3-0. And no goals in the draw between Bay United and Treasure Beach. All right, our JPL commentator and analyst Dwight Jeremiah now joins us via Zoom. Dwight, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Laura. Are you hearing me clearly? Yeah, Nora. hearing you fine. Oh, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all is well on your end. Um, I just want to start by asking you about Dos Santos in that post-match interview. He takes a swipe at the integrity of the league, suggesting there might be some shenanigans at play on Sunday. What say you? Um, I think, you know, always there's a lot riding on the line. It, it's six spot. And, um, yeah, you, you know, I, I think it's just for him to... To get it out there so that um teams if they have any thought players you know of, of going easy on the day he just wants the authorities to have a look out but i mean hey i mean i don't think my lines really gave him enough reasons not to come out on sunday because i i'm not saying and, and my lines i think they it's just to show what they did on on, on sunday in terms of i think a few of the goals were really you know, we're really poor defending and, and maybe those are the things that you might be looking at to think that maybe there was more than just poor defending, but just thinking that these teams have nothing to play for. But, you know, when you see one of the players, the defenders trying to back heel to the goalkeeper, well, you know, those are some of the things that the Santos might be looking to feed off to say, hey, um, maybe because they're all out here in the West and they're in the East, maybe they will team up to do this. 
I don't necessarily think so. It's just that, yeah, the way that Malines went about it um, really made him, you know, give credence to what he's saying. Um, but, I mean, this is not new to any tournament. I mean, Lance can remind me, I read about it that in 1978, the World Cup in Argentina, then he said it was a lot of situation where, you know, games might have been fixed or stuff. So I guess when there's a lot riding on it, um, coaches will look at everything and everywhere where they can get an advantage or just, you know, try to make a case. Yeah, speaking about a lot riding on the last match as well as an advantage, I'm going to use those statements that you just said and ask you about who do you think has the advantage in this final match and can seal that sixth spot? And I know it's a very heavy question, but I'd love to hear what you think. Heavy because I'm from the West and I'd, I had, I'd love to see, I mean, Marcel Gale and I have a very good relationship, but I'd love to see Montego Bay United back in it. I think they've done well in recent uh, match weeks. I mean, they're really uh, probably one of the farm teams in the league at the moment. Um, it seems, though, that they might left it for a little bit too late for two reasons. The goal difference, I mean, that's a massive seven. That's like an extra point. And then they're playing a Tivoli team who is really looking to try and ensure that they get that second spot to automatically qualify for that semi-finals. Cavaliers are hot on their heels, um, tied on points as well. So looking for, you know, to get a win and see any slip up. So I think they have the more difficult of the two. Waterhouse, they play Harborview and the Santos who just played Harborview. It, once he come up against Tivoli, he realized that it's a different proposition and he has the difficult, the most difficult of two ties, the more difficult of the two. So I, if, if, if I go by what the, the ties are like, the opponents, um, I would have to say Waterhouse have the advantage. I'd love to see Montego Bay in it, but I just think that it's going to be a little bit short on them. Could just be down to the goal difference in the end. Yeah, and we've discussed on the show in recent weeks, uh, Dwight, the fact that Montego Bay's offensive line has been so boosted by the likes of Gordon and Brian Brown and company that um, Montego Bay United's front or attacking line is now impressive enough to, to warrant a playoff spot. But I think I agree with you that based on the permutations and where the standings are at the moment and goal difference, um, the odds are against them. Heavily against them, I would I would say I'd even add that to it, Lance. But but on the points you made before, apart from sentiments being from this side, this is also one of the reasons I'd love to see them in there because I really think they've come together as a team and and, and a joy to watch as well. You know, you know, I've covered their games of, uh, in recent times with Brown and Gordon, and and I can tell you they they really are easy on the eyes and and and, and good to look at and, and really even when I saw them against Mount Pleasant. At Jackson, they were really a good unit. And I feel if they were to get into the playoffs, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they made the semifinals and, and caused some trouble. It's just that I, I, I think the semifinal might be out of reach at this time. Yeah, can you comment quickly to Dwight on the ownership structure at, at Montego Bay United? Because they, they changed their owner's setup um, in the off season. And uh, that appears to have sparked an, an injection in the in the in the in the outfit on a, of outfit on a whole. I, I think so. I think there was a, there was a point when Orville, the, the previous owner, Mr. Powell, I think he was just pretty much, you know, default mode autopilot. I think he was saying um, it's about time there was some change in the the whole ownership and structure. It was getting a bit frustrated with a lot of the youngsters in this region thinking they. They have other distractions than football and he wasn't prepared to pump more resources in it. Uh, but I think these new owners, the structure and, and what they have put into it, and it's, it's like a, a whole new makeover. You see them even looking more like the sea ball forward, even in their outfit. But, you know, I've spoken to some persons on the ground and they're saying that resources are being pumped into it and the structure has been revamped. So it's, it's closer to being more where you are a professional setup. Um, not to take any swipe at Harville, I think he did a, a decent job and a, a very good job in Montego Bay. But yes, it's, it's an upgrade and I think it's, it's reflecting in the on-field play from Montego Bay and how, how much they would go to, to invest in the Brazilians that came in. When they came in initially, persons were saying, yeah, Brazilian, but they are Brazilians and Brazilian. 
But I think over time, they have adapted to the Jamaican Premier League and they have given some thrust to this Montego Bay United team. And the more I talk about this team, the more I'd love to see them in the playoff lands. <laughs> yeah, and, and kudos, as you said, to Orville Powell, who, you know, was, was owner of the team when they were last champions back in 2015-2016. I want to talk quickly about their rivals, Waterhouse, whose season has been fluctuating. I was making the point a couple of weeks ago that they had not scored back-to-back -back wins in throughout the season since October of last year. And now we see them with three wins on the bounce. So it does suggest that they've, they've put their act together at the right time and uh, poised now to get into the playoffs. I guess sometimes they say when you're back against the wall, then there's only one thing you have to do is to fight your way off of it. And I think Waterhouse, they have really done that. You're right, they were inconsistent. It was frustrating to Marcel when I spoke to him sometimes out here. He just, you know, he just wanted some consistency. He just felt that they weren't in tune enough. But he kept at it, kept working at it. Mind you, his last few games have been, what you'd say, fairly not the most difficult of tough opponents, not to take anything away from him because you play what is before you. But that can't but help in terms of putting wins together. As a coach, I know that that when you start winning, it's almost like, you know, it's a habit. It's 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 something that you just go out on the field thinking that you're not going to lose. And that's a big mindset to have. So it's the right time for him um, going into this final game against Harborview. Um, there's nothing that suggests that they won't get it. I mean, Ludlow and Harborview, they're a real professional setup, but I just still think that Harborview have what it takes this season to stop a water house that is vying for a sixth spot. Um, you just don't know what water, what Harborview team will turn up on the day, and you just can't go with logics. Maybe they'll come good, and Montego Bay is open for that, but I doubt that. Yeah. Um, but not much to play for. Yeah, and one of the wins that Waterhouse had in their three-game winning streak would have been against Dunbar Holden, who had beaten them back in, in the first round. Uh, your quick thoughts on Dunbar Holden's faltering towards the back end of the season and how disappointing that may be for their coach, Lenny Hyde. Very disappointing because when I spoke to him at Draxall, he said he really wanted to get into that playoff position. He really wanted to make that top six. Um, so I know it would have hurt him a lot in the way they just tapered off. They're totally the opposite of what you just mentioned with Waterhouse coming to the fore at the right time. Don't be holding that picked up ahead of steam leading into these final rounds of game and you felt that they were going to really make a decent push and it was going to be down to three teams at the last round of fixtures, which I was hoping for. Um, but they started to taper off and, and, and once that, that game against Waterhouse, I felt that is the point too when they probably just dropped the shoulders thinking this was a direct game against one of our opponents. It's a game you just had to win if you're going to be in that position for playoff or at least not lose. And they lost it. And I felt at that time that loss took the wind out of their sails and, and it was that ship was never moving again. And the Montego Bay and Waterhouse just sailed past them. Yeah. Well, Dwight, of course, we want to thank you for stopping by on the Sportsmax Zone. And what's for sure is if anybody missed any of the JPL matches, they're not going to miss that final one. All eyes will be glued to Sportsmax because I can't wait to see. Like, it's a thrill to see who ends up with that final spot. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, I'll be on call for some of those games in those playoffs. Yeah, yeah I get in some excited football. Yeah, looking forward, Dwight. Take care, and we'll talk again really, really soon. Thank you, and all the best, lads. Yeah. All right. Remember, the JPL lives on your home of champions. Let's take a quick break.